Hold shift to drift the horse. What am I doing with my life? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I'm Josh Dreves. I've spent years playing the best MMO games available. Now it's time to do the opposite and find the worst of the worst. I'm going to play them all so you don't have to. Join me on a journey through the most awful MMOs I can find. Drop a like on the vid, sub to the channel, and ring the bell so you don't miss a single video. Remember, you can join the live premiere of new videos at 8pm Mondays and Thursdays. And if you're enjoying the series so far and would like it to continue, please consider supporting through the Patreon like all these awesome people have. You'll find the link in the description below. Today, we're playing Horse Riding Tales. It's on Steam and mobile. It's free and it's only 232 megabytes. So let's Let's give it a go. The Steam page for Horse Riding Tales is aggressively positive, letting me know the horse riding game of my dreams is here. That's a bold claim, Horse Riding Tales, as I've had some very, very strange dreams. The Steam page also lists online PvP. Good God, I hope it's jousting. Spoiler, it was not jousting. And finally, Steam lists this game as similar to Neverwinter and Path of Exile. Brilliant, I'm excited to play. Starting it up, you're asked to set the window launch size, which is actually quite a decent start. Options are always good, but this is the last good option we are given. Character creation, you can be a girl. That's the end of the sentence, you can be a girl. There's no male option. While making your character, you've got a load of custom options, but most are locked behind magical sparkles or gems, which are premium currency. So already the microtransaction advertising has begun. You can choose what color helmet you want or go without one. <laughs> a black helmet, how boring. Who even owns a black horse riding helmet? There's no joke here because safety isn't a joke. Now on to naming. You cannot enter your own name. You must click the random name generator and select one that you like. Absolutely every name in here sounds like a stripper. Seriously, if this whole thing rebranded as stripper name generator, I feel it would be a success. I settle with Elena Foxy. See? Told you. In a surprising subversion of established conventions, the game must be started by clicking the giant X button. What an odd design choice. Welcome to Meadowcroft, home of Meadowcroft Riding Academy. It's a rich old country village lived in by rich old country horse people. We're greeted by Mrs. Foxall, and she explains the only thing that matters here is horse riding. The residents live and breathe horses, and if you're not into horses, you will be exiled. The camera flies around and focuses on what I assume is our house. Now there's a conversation between me, my mum and my dad. This is my character portrait. Why does it look absolutely nothing like the character I made? What was the point of making a character if you're just going to give me a stock image as a portrait? This looks like a knockoff Hermione. The intro conversation plays out entirely from this angle outside the house. We never see a model of ourselves, the mum or the dad. In fact, the parents don't even have character portraits. They are just disembodied lines of text. Our dad asks us to go and muck the horses out and we complain because it's our birthday. Right, newsflash Elena, I've actually mucked horses out quite a few times and they don't give a crap if it's your birthday or not. They are gonna poop regardless. Before we leave, our mother gives us the traditional birthday present of a magical orb. We don't know what this orb does, but we are told when the time is right, we will understand. Now the game starts. Third person, WASD movement, no jumping. Movement is floaty, like you have to slowly speed up in a direction before you start moving properly. Graphics aren't awful. I like stylized things. It's blocky and colorful. I quite like it when a game has a clearly defined style and chooses to stick to it. We need to go to the stables and help Nathan and oh God, look at his character portrait. He's so almost handsome. He's got the hair and the eyes and the smile, but the picture looks just wrong, just off. It's got this uncanny valley twist that makes me really uncomfortable. The depth, the length of the neck, the focal point, the focus, the lines, it's just not quite right. Our horses are kept in stables and caring for them is done through a series of mini games. The first is replacing the hay, which is simply clicking on a 3x3 three three grid. Each click uses up hay. We'll look at how to make hay later. Then you replace the horseshoes on each foot by clicking on each foot. I don't think this is how replacing horseshoes works. You can also clean the horse, but all oh, will come to that later. Nathan then spots we have an orb and tells us he has one too. Ah, oh, awesome, orb buddies. He goes on to explain it's a magical taming orb and it's used to tame and capture wild horses and suggests we go to the paddock and give it a go. 
This next mechanic really, really annoys me. When back outside, you can click on this button to snap the camera to the nearest wild horse, but doing that also switches the camera to a top-down, isometric, Farmville-style view. You can still control your character, it's just super jarring for it to happen instantly. Wild horses respawn every minute, and this is how you tame one. First of all, throw orbs at it. It shows you how many and what type of orbs you need to use. To throw, you just click the orb. You can't miss a throw, there's no aiming involved. Then approach the horse slowly. You've got this slider on the right, sliding it up moves you forward, but you can't go too fast. If you go too fast, the fear bar will rise and the horse will run away. Then when you reach it, you now own it. As someone who's ridden a horse once or twice, I can confirm this is 100% accurate. The orb throwing, the approaching from the front, the immediate ownership, this is just what it's really like taming horses. We now send the horse to the stable by telling it to go to the stable, and how does it know where the stable is? It was wild a few seconds ago! Back at the stable, we're shown how to feed apples to the horse to level it up. You just click on the apple bucket, but you can't click too quickly, only once every few seconds. This mechanic means getting apples is the only way to progress in this game. Remember this. We're now told to take the new horse for a ride when our character says, but I don't know how to ride. Nathan, an apparent stable boy, then gives us the worst advice in the history of advice. I believe in you, even if you don't. Plus, you've been watching those riders all the time, and that orb will probably help. Wow. Thanks, Nathan. I never realised it was that simple. Forget lessons or training, just believe in yourself and carry a magical orb. So it turns out we are a natural at riding horses. Who would have guessed? Jesus, this stadium is massive. How much money does this place have? Ride round and explore for a bit, then head back to the stable and we're told to name our horse. Hmm, I want something original, something that shows how unique I am. How about Moonlight Sprinkle? Oh damn, that's too long. Um, Buttercup Sparkle. No, no, that's too generic. Aha, I've got it. Rainbow Dash. Perfect. Once again, back to stable care, replace all the hay, replace the horseshoes, but oh wait, no, we're out of horseshoes. And we need to pay premium currency to get more. They cost one gem, and the game gives you 40 to start with. Or you can craft horseshoes. Well, that's no problem, I'll just craft them. Gonna guess the anvil is the crafting menu, and oh god, who designed this UI? All the item stats on the right are just overflowing down the screen and nothing's in the right place. I spent some time clicking around this menu, but what I don't realise yet is you can't actually craft until the game shows you how to. I mean, you can still access the menu and click the buttons and see what the stuff does, you just can't actually make anything yet. Back on the main game, all the main story quests are given to you by Nathan. Clicking his portrait on the left shows you the current objective and you can teleport right to wherever you need to be. Right now it's the practice arena, because exploring the world is for losers. This is the practice arena, complete with amazing tutorial. Let me walk you through this absolute brilliance. There are only three things you can do in the practice arena. Academy training, dressage, and flying. You have to start off with academy training. This is training. The horses move on a preset path. You cannot turn or steer. Before a jump, you'll see this bar on the right. Hold E or click this button to charge the bar. Doing so uses stamina. Release once the charge is above the line. If you release too early, you will fail the jump. If you release too late, you'll be wasting your total stamina. This is it. This is the entire training minigame. I finish the training and am rewarded with an apple. Ah, so this is how we level up. Right, I'm going to be doing this a lot then. Back outside, the book icon is flashing. Seems this is our quest journal, showing all current or daily quests. Clicking the play button, buy a quest, again, sends you right there. Who even needs to explore a world in an MMORPG? Why even have one? Oh, hey, now we can wash the horse in the stables too. Do you want to see that? Here you go. Now, I'm a guy, so of course my first thought was... Why am I pissing on the horse? But honestly, that's not even what annoys me the most about this. What annoys me the most is how the little completion circles fill in counterclockwise. Who the hell made them do that? With our horse nice and clean, we need a new saddle. Nathan suggests crafting one. Ah, finally, crafting. He tells us to mine for wood and then we can go... No, hang on, no, go back. He what? Did he just say that? So I rewatched the video and yep. Mine for wood. So we go and mine for wood. 
The camera does that isometric thing again, and I still hate it, but at least you can click the eye symbol on the left to revert back to third person. Find the wood, click to mine, and doing so fills this bar. And once the bar is full up, um, nothing happens. I try another bit of wood. Same thing. I try right-clicking and left-clicking, try using the E key. Nothing. It just endlessly mines without giving me anything. I'm not getting any resources. There's some flowers nearby, so I mine those. Yes, you mine the flowers. It's the same thing. Fills up the bar, but no resources. I click all the UI buttons, accidentally teleport myself back to the stable and I have to run back, which is hard by the way because there's no mini-map or world map. Navigation is just memorize where you are. So finally, after about 20 minutes of mining wood and getting nowhere, I look up a guide and it does not help at all. I don't know how to gather resources if this isn't it. Maybe I should just spend what gems the game gave me and progress that way. I go back to the academy and play the first level again to try and get more apples, but this makes me go through the tutorial again. To take part in the higher tier races, I need to be a higher level and my horse needs more stamina, so I just force feed Rainbow Dash some apples. She hits level 4 and this still isn't high enough for the next tier, meaning the academy tiers are tied to my level and not the horses, and my level is only raised through questing. Oh, those are the two events, dressage and flight mode? There's no way I'm doing those. I'm way too low and I'm not going to get there in time. I cannot mine the wood, so let's try the chat. You need to answer a basic maths question before you're allowed to chat. There doesn't seem to be a general chat option, but I can send private messages. Look game, I'm a 29 year old guy playing a horse racing MMO. There is no way I'm PMing anyone. I'm probably on a list just for downloading this. Here's the situation. I can't tame another horse because I need orbs to do that and I can't make orbs because I need resources to do that and I can't seem to gather resources. So I head back to the stable and spend a gem on a hoof pick. Wait, what? It's one gem per pick. Not one gem for a set of picks. Man, this is going to get expensive. While washing the horse, this helpful hand icon in the bottom right just points at nothing. Wonder what accessories I've got. Ah, yes. None. My horse reaches level 5, still doesn't unlock any new events. I need to do quests. All the fun events, the academy riding, dressage or flight are all tied to my level, so I need to finish this quest. Maybe it's just broken, so I turn off and then restart the game. Oh good, there's a daily login reward too, because kids are never too young to develop a crippling gaming addiction. Oh, there's room chat option now. And mining works. Every two hits you gain two resources, then when you fill the bar it explodes and you gain more. So I can craft. Oh, and the craft interface is fixed itself as well. It's as if the developer was watching me play and taking notes. Finishing a crafting recipe makes the item pop out of this rather demonic looking treasure chest. This does not fit the aesthetic of the rest of the game at all. I craft some more orbs and go and tame another horse. This means I need another stable which I buy with gems. Nathan pops in to say he admires us and we should consider going show jumping. We've also unlocked tier 3 academy training. Okay, tier 3 jumping is when the difficulty starts to ramp up, and you might laugh, but hear me out. Charging a jump uses stamina. You only have a limited amount of total stamina. If you charge a jump too little, you cannot add more, meaning you fail the jump and lose the points you would have got for it. But if you charge over, you waste stamina, and believe me, you have none to waste. The margins are so thin, and if you do happen to use up all of your stamina, your horse becomes exhausted and you instantly fail the entire training tier. So running out of stamina is basically an instant loss. But here's a pro gamer strat for horse riding tails. Running out of stamina is an instant fail, but failing a jump is not. It will simply not give you the points for that jump. So if you don't have enough stamina to make a jump, just don't even try. You'll fail the jump, but still finish the course and maybe get enough points to pass. I need to finish all the academy training levels with three stars. There's no way that's happening. The only way to get a high enough score multiply is not only to make every single jump, but to wear maxed out accessories and they all cost a load of gems. The next quest is to make a red saddle. I need 30 wood, iron and cotton. So this is the moment it begins. This is the start of the real game, which is grinding for resources. You can't even hold down click or E to gather stuff. You have to click every single time for every single swing of the pickaxe and you mine all of the resources. Doesn't matter what they are, wood, metal or cotton, you are using a pickaxe. 
I gather enough and craft a red saddle. Now we need a rope. And that means, yep, more grinding for resources. I complete the quest and Nathan cheers us on some more. He suggests taming horses and selling them, so let's go and do that. The Taming Wild Horses Orb game isn't very well optimised because whenever you start, the camera will swing and face completely the wrong way before snapping back into the correct position. If you fail this taming minigame or click cancel, the horse will run away, but don't worry, a new one spawns every 60 seconds. If you manage to tame it and don't want to keep it, you can sell it for gold. This is the only way you can get gold, and I'm not entirely sure this is how horse ownership works. Nathan tells us to go and compete in the Wind Rush Tier Challenge and then says he's sorry he can't come and watch us. Well, if you can't see me riding Nathan, then what is the point of riding at all? The Wind Rush Challenge is just another course layout of the Academy training, but layout is irrelevant seeing as you aren't controlling your horse anyway. All you're doing is charging jumps, and again, the stamina usage is bloody tight. The only way to get more stamina is by feeding your horse apples and leveling it up. You can only feed them an apple every few seconds, so another pro gamer strat. I call this three tick apple feeding. Click on the bucket, then open a new sub menu. Now return to the main stable and click the bucket again. Boom! Efficient apple feeding. Damn, I'm five apples short of a level, so I need to do academy training to get apples to feed the horses to get more stamina, but I need gold to take part in academy training, and gold comes from selling horses, but I need orbs to capture horses, and I need to grind resources to get orbs. Are you seeing the gameplay loop here? Also, the stamina warning bar has now glitched onto the screen and stays there, even though I'm in the stable. What? Now the horse is a higher level, we need two horseshoes for each foot? You need more resources to care for your horses as they level up, which means even more grinding. I managed to finish the Tier 6 Academy training just, but I can't afford to enter Tier 7 because I need gold. This game seems perfectly poised to push people toward microtransactions, so I wonder what they cost. A value pack costs 800 gems and contains everything we need to really get started. The cheapest way to get 800 gems is to buy gem pack 2 and 3, which comes to a total of $41. Wow. Oh hey, we have daily quests too, maybe finishing these will help. Complete every training area to 3 stars. That's impossible, as I need to spend gems to get my score multiplier high enough to do that. Make two horses happy. I can't do that yet, because I need more hay and more horseshoes, so I'd need to go and grind for stuff. Capture three horses. Can't do this either, as I'd need to grind to get orbs. Mine 150 cotton. You know what? Yes, that I can do. So I go and mine 150 cotton. And while I'm doing that, let's just read some reviews. I like the game, but I think you should be able to be a male instead of a girl. It makes a lot of boys not want to play cast they don't want to be a girl. Played little of it, basically Star Stable Online, but if it was a mobile game on Steam for PC, it's okay, I guess. You might like it, you might not, man. Just play it for yourself and find out. I love the horses. Horses I got so far. Mooney Sunshine and Robbie Storm. I love the horses so much. I want a white one, though, so much. Maybe I was expecting a little too much from the type of player who would actually, you know, review this game. But hey, they're all positive. I wonder what the negative ones say. It won't let me collect wood, bruh. I just wish there was a Dolphin Pregnation DLC. Ah, maybe. Maybe we should just avoid all feedback for this game entirely. It's hard to keep track of the daily quest and know how much cotton you've mined because there's no on-screen counter. You have to keep going back into your quest log to check. Right, so this is the core loop. My main quest is to complete academy training, which needs gold because every time you attempt it, you need to pay. So I need to tame and sell horses, which is the only way to get gold. But that needs orbs and they need to be crafted through collecting resources. But then I won't be able to complete the harder tier training because I need more stamina to make the jumps and more accessories and a happy horse to increase my score multiplier, which means more grinding for resources to make the hay, horseshoes and accessories. And then grinding lower tier of the training to get apples to level up my horse for more stamina. But every single time you do a lower level, you're still spending gold. Fine, I will do the stupid daily quest. I grind for a while, I make more orbs, and I capture more horses, I sell them off to whoever buys them. Dog food, a glue factory, I don't care. 
Another daily quest done, now to make two horses happy. This means changing the hay, which now takes three pieces of hay per square, so 27 hay per horse. And hay is made from wood. You mine the wood to make the hay. No, game. This is not a science fiction thing we don't understand. Hay is a real thing. We know how to make it. It's made of dried grass. Just do that. I can confidently say this is not a game about horse riding because that's what you do the least. This is a game about resource gathering, mining wood, mining metal and mining cotton. 80% of this game is mining. Oh, what's this? Cross country. Sounds interesting. Maybe we'll get to ride somewhere new. Oh, no. No, it's just a time trial around the main map. Hold shift to drift the horse. I'm not making that up. It's an actual in-game instruction. God damn, this horse drifts like a beast. And again, I can say, as someone who's ridden a few horses, this is exactly accurate. This is exactly how a horse handles. The cross-country game is fun exactly once, then it gets boring because nothing changes. It's just the same course again and again, and there's only so many times you can drift a horse before it gets dull. And another sentence I never thought I'd say. The global chat then lets me know apparently there's another YouTuber here. Oh my god, horse riding tails is about to explode in popularity. I still need to make one more horse happy, which means more hay, which means mining more wood. Oh, it also seems I never named my new horse. Um, quick, think of a magical, fantastical name. Jim. Perfect. My daily quest is to achieve three stars on all training missions, but there's no way I can do that. Even if I hit every jump perfectly and end the course with stamina, I won't have the score multiplier needed to reach the three star point limit without spending real money to buy stuff. I just grind lower tier training levels to get apples and then grind more resources. This game is awful. Oh, now you let me spam click apples on the bucket. Didn't let me do that earlier, did you, game? I need more gold to enter more races, which means selling more horses, which means more orbs, which means more gathering. Oh look, you can leave the town. I wonder what the outside world is like. Finally some adventure. Oh no, no, there's a giant barrier preventing you from leaving. You need to either be level 7 or a VIP, so I guess we'll never know. I wonder how much VIP costs. The lifetime pass for this game is $80. Eight zero. What? You're actually pricing yourself alongside AAA console titles. Get out of here, game. This is my highest tier race. I've maxed out my horse's mood and accessories, and I've been able to make all but one jump, because attempting that would empty my stamina and fail me the race. So I'm forced to end with one jump missed. Maybe I'll still have enough points to progress. Zero. Zero stars. Meaning you need to hit every single jump. So more apples, more races, more gold, more horses, more orbs, and all of that means more grinding. You know what? I'm not grinding anymore. I'm done. Let's wrap this up. Horse riding tails might have horses, some riding, and maybe a tail or two, but it's not actually about any of these things. At its core, it's about collecting three resources by clicking on them. That is the bulk of the gameplay. That's what you'll be doing most of the time. Everything in the game needs resources, and you can pay real money for them or buy lifetime VIP and collect them faster, but ultimately that's what this is. It's a gathering game. The horse riding is slow and boring, apart from the times where you get to drift a horse. The academy training itself is just on rails with you charging jumps, the isometric camera switching is jarring and pointless, and the plot is just, we are a girl who likes horses. This isn't about the horses, it's about resources, which is why the final rating for Horse Riding Academy is Mine the Wood out of 10. Cheers for watching! If you want more Worst MMO Ever videos, then drop a like or sub to the channel. A massive thank you to my Patreon supporters, whose awesome names are on screen now, and my Twitch subs, who make all my videos possible. If you're enjoying the series and would like more, you can support the Patreon from only £1 a month. Comment down below with any game you think deserves the title of Worst MMO, then check the video description for links to the Patreon, Twitch, Twitter, and Discord. And as always, have a great day.